Hey movie junkies, welcome back to Twin Flicks, where we always here celebrating the magic of movies and most importantly, physical media with you. Well guys, it is finally here. After I believe a year and a half of patiently waiting, we, it is finally here to live and die in LA in 4K. I mean, this thing has been pushed around with its street date uh, left and right, again, for almost a year and a half. Uh, for good reason, though, because Kino Lorber has been patiently waiting on William Frequin to, uh, to, to approve this new 4K transfer. Well, he finally did, and it's finally out, and we finally have to live and die in L.A. in 4K glory. And uh, it's like cocaine. Oh, yeah. Now, full disclosure here, I'm going to be honest here, I never owned uh, the MGM previous release Blu-ray. Uh, the main reason is because I heard that it had some of the wrong color tones to it, the wrong aspect ratio, and so I just never picked it up. And I never owned the Shaft Factory as well because I heard some really mixed things about that, even though it was from a 4K scan some really mixed reviews on that. So I never picked up either Blu-ray. And uh, I really wanted to do a comparison to this 4K. Um, and I'm not gonna download a ripped version uh, that's been severely compromised. I'm not gonna pirate. I'm not gonna download a, a, a movie to, to compare to this 4K. And honestly, I do know some comparison channels that do do that. Uh, no, I want to do an honest, solid comparison and review natively from the HD uh, Blu-ray and natively from the 4K UHD. And so I went to my uh, social media accounts and I made a post asking if anyone is picking up this 4K, are they willing to let go of their previous Blu-ray? And I honestly didn't think I was going to get anything from that post uh, because I know... I know as physical media collectors, we love to hold on to each and every edition that's released. Um, but to my surprise, a good friend of the show, John, he DM'd me and he said he was going to go ahead and buy this 4K and he would send me his previous Blu-ray. And I received it the other day and I just want to say thanks, John, for sending this to me. So I'm giving a huge shout out to you, man, because without you, this video you're watching right here wouldn't exist. Now, from what I've heard, Kino Lorber is sourced from a new 4K restoration. Uh, I know that the Shout Factory version was also sourced from a 4K restoration, but this is a new 4K restoration uh, from the original 35mm negative forming a native 4K DI with HDR10 and Dolby Vision grading and the intended theatrical ratio of 185 to 1, all approved by director William Freakin. All right, so let's dive in and check out if this 4K UHD is worthy of upgrading your Blu-ray from. Right from the opening shot, you can see an immediate improvement and upgrade in clarity, visibility to details and warmer colors that fills the 185 to 1 frame with much better stability. Even the titles are, are more stable where the Blu-ray had some pretty instability in certain areas. Now the film has always been a grainy film uh, to evoke the gritty subject matter. Uh, the Blu-ray, however, didn't handle the grain very well where it was uh, overly harsh and very muddy in different areas of the film, uh, being very inconsistent, where many scenes were limited in how crisp and detailed it can appear. Here on the 4K, the grain is much better resolved now. I still noticed a few areas here and there where the grain was excessive, but I think that's just inherited from the original camera negative and not an issue with the transfer. Now another major improvement here is with the strength of the colors. The Blu-ray was decent, but also there was some uh, color instability and also some muted colors. And also there, there was a f some minor um, incorrect color, color tones. Uh, the HDR Dolby Vision grading really helps this by opening up the color gamut much wider, giving very nice color depth. The opening red and green neon titles really pops now with intensity. The different shades of reds are also handled much better here on the 4K and looking more lifelike. Uh, from the red soaked scenes uh, that looks richer uh, to blood red looking more lifelike and deeper grimson red and also uh, cherry reds looks much more uh, vibrant and, and, and stronger. 
Yellows are electric, greens are lusher, and blues are stronger and more natural looking than I've ever seen them before. Other colors, such as the 80s neon or pastels, exude more vibrancy that ignites the screen. It just all looks tighter. Uh, fire looks incredible, much more deeper and richer orange-yellow with a slight glow around it, uh, looking more lifelike and natural. Whereas on the Blu-ray, the fire was slightly blown out and there wasn't very much depth to it. Saturation is also increased without it looking too harsh or rich, but used just enough to give more life to the colors. Highlights like street lamps, uh, neon signs, headlights, flashlights are, are more stable and a tad warmer than the Blu-ray is. Uh, skin tones are also looking more natural now, where on the Blu-ray, it, it leaned more towards the palish side. I will say, though, there were certain scenes here and there where the skin tones pushed red just a little too much. It looked a little too hot. Uh, contrast is also on point, brightening the image uh, more, um, where the Blu-ray looked darker. Uh, the entire image looks fresher, more vibrant, that really pops, breathing new life to the image than I've ever seen it before. Now, one issue with the Blu-ray is that it had some areas with a lot of black crush uh, that engulfed uh, details and even engulfing some colors. And I even noticed some slightly grayish blacks in certain areas. Uh, black levels on this 4K are now increased where they're looking deeper, more inky black. And we also have rich shadows that penetrate into the screen, bringing out much more information in the image. An example of this is when William Defoe opens the warehouse door around the 16 minute mark. I mean, you can see here, his black shirt and black leather jacket, they are both now nicely distinguishable from the shadowy black background. Another area is when William Peterson is standing outside the apartment door. The black levels are just much better resolved with this 4K, even in the darkest areas of the frame. White levels are also brighter, more natural and crisper looking. Now, a major, major improvement here over the Blu-ray is the abundance of details and textuals that look razor sharp, and I didn't notice any artificial sharpening done. However, the sharpness really comes down to what the 80s lenses and film stock would allow. But the majority is improved and more visible than the Blu-ray. Even in wide shots, you can visibly see the background that's more active. Inside the offices, apartment rooms, bars, all look striking and active, and also some nice uh, sheen to metallic surfaces and objects. Uh, even down to the numbers on each locker near the end of the film are sharper and more legible now. As for the bitrate, I saw it range from 67, peaking around 95. Guys, this is how an almost 40-year-old film should look with a 4K restoration. And this was also a relatively low-budget film, uh, not a high-budget studio film with all the bells and whistles. And the new 4K restoration really elevates and breathes new life back into the film. This is just a fantastic-looking presentation. All right, now let's get into the audio presentation of this 4K of To Live and Die in LA. And it does include a lossless DTS 5.1 mix and a stereo mix. Now, the 5.1 mix, from my understanding, is encoded from the original 4 track uh, from the 2.0 Dolby Stereo track that was released theatrically back in 1985. And this might be why there just isn't much going on with the surround channels. Uh, there really isn't much of a surround presence there. However, the 5.1 track uh, is the track to choose from. It's because it offers better channel separation and movement. I also noticed more benefit in the bass, giving more uh, extra depth in the film, especially during uh, the film's synth score from Wayne Chung and also the pop tracks. And also with the sound effects. An example is with the explosion during the prologue, guns firing, and fire, such as uh, in the ending with the warehouse, it all has more rumble and weight to it uh, than the stereo track does. The 5.1 track also has better uh, sonic and dynamic range and a, a lot of presence to it. Again, there just isn't much directional effects with the surround channels. That's the only issue. The dialogue is rendered uh, very clean and clear throughout without sound or music drowning out any part of the dialogue. Now the stereo mix does sound good and clean with, with some good uh, dynamic range and fidelity, but it really comes down to the 5.1 track that, that really complements the outstanding video quality. Alright, so my score for uh, Kino Lorber's 4K USD presentation of To Live and Die in LA, I'm giving the video a 4.5 out of a 5 and the audio a 4 out of a 5.
This is a major upgrade from the Blu-ray and definitely one to have in your collection. But now this is the real test because I want to know what you think. When you look at the differences here between the two formats, the 4K UHD and the previous Blu-ray, which do you think looks better? Head over to the comment section and let me know. Well, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me for a few minutes here talking about to live and die in L.A., the 4K. Let's get that out of here. As always, uh, keep doing your part in keeping physical media alive, and we'll see you next time.